Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited for today's video because it is going to be my first update or episode two in a new series that I started on my channel called Palette Roulette. Um, essentially, I just wanted to make sure that I was doing a nice job of cycling through my palette collection outside of my 19 Shadows in 2019 project. I just filmed an update for that, so I'll leave that linked if you guys are interested in watching that. But that is my year-long project where I am trying to paint a bunch of different eyeshadows from a bunch of different palettes. Um, so I'm focused on all the... So I've been focused on all the palettes in that project, but I want to make sure that I'm still cycling through the rest of my very large palette collection. So last month I started this series where I took my entire list of all my eyeshadow palettes and I put them into the Tiny Decisions app. I took 10 of them from that list, put them in the Tiny Decisions app, and randomly selected five eyeshadow palettes that I wanted to just use at least one time throughout the past month. And then I'm coming back here with you today to share the look or looks that I created with each of those palettes and then randomly select the five palettes that I will be focused on in the month of August. So if you guys are interested in my first update, then stay tuned. But first, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I hope you'll consider doing so before you go. I post videos every single Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday and without further ado let's get into the update. Sorry if I don't feel like 100% myself. I am not feeling the best today about my upload schedule it just I feel like I have not been on my game with YouTube since like July so I don't want to miss another update so I don't want to miss another upload um, and I didn't have like anything pre-filmed so I wanted to make sure I could still film today. Um, I was thinking about doing like a get ready with me sort of life update just talking to you guys about I don't know my summer and I feel like I've been dealing with like a few mental health things just over the course of the summer which is why I just feel like I haven't been like 100% on my game with YouTube so I was thinking about filming that maybe this weekend and then trying to get it up next week so stay tuned for that if you are interested at all but let's get into this update so like I said I randomly selected five eyeshadow palettes and if I'm being honest I only used each eyeshadow palette this past month one time to create one different look. I'm opening up my album so that I can look at the pictures I took. So up first we had the Persona Identity palette and I actually really like the look that I created with this palette. I really do enjoy this palette quite a bit. I think it's a really underrated palette. I don't hear enough people talk about this and what I love about this palette is that there's cool tones in there and the shimmers in this palette are incredible. They are stunning. They pack a punch, wet or dry. I think that they are super, super nice. I have seen teasers that Persona is coming out with a second palette this year, fingers crossed, and I would definitely purchase if she came out with a second one because I really do love the quality and I just love this eyeshadow palette in general. For the look that I created, I used Charming and Magic in, or sorry, Maverick in the crease, and then I also used Bombshell all over the lid, but then I took the shade Kaleidoscope out of the Dream Street palette and kind of focused that on the inner third of my eye to create this like cool toned greeny look that I just absolutely love. I've been really loving green shimmer shades this summer for some reason, so I was excited to create a look that was like kind of green or that was incorporated green into this. The shade that I'm swatching right here, which is the shade Bombshell, if it catches the light right, it can almost look like this like bronzy greeny shade. So I absolutely love this shade. I'm really happy with the look that I created with this. And like I said, I really do like this palette and recommend it. Next is a look that I created with the Tartlet in Bloom. And this is an OG favorite palette of mine. One of my favorites in my collection still to this day. I've hit pan on multiple shades in this. And I just kind of created my everyday basic look with this palette. I wanted to use... I wanted to use these two shades right here because it had been a while since I'd used more of like the pink tone shades in here. So I went in with Sweetheart and the Crease, deepened up the outer V with the shade Rebel, and then I used Funny Girl all over the lid to create the look that you're seeing. Again, it's just kind of like a basic look with this palette, but I always love using this palette and always love reaching for it. Highly recommend this palette to anyone who loves neutral eyeshadow looks. It's such a user-friendly palette and easy palette to use. So. Definitely recommend and was happy to use that. Next we have my Sweet Peach palette and I wanted to not do my everyday just like basic look that I create with this palette that I've created over and over again. So I did go in with the shade Puree in the crease which I usually always do and then deepened it with Summer Yum which again I usually always do but instead of using my favorite shade from the palette which is Luscious, let me swatch the shade for you guys. I This is one of my favorite shimmers throughout my entire collection. I love this shade. I would rebuy this palette just for this shade. I love it so much. 
um, but I ended up going with Bless Her Heart, which is this, like olive toned shimmer all over the lid. And I like kind of like the look that I created. I think it's a nice, like it's more of like a fall toned sort of look. Um, it was okay. I feel like I probably could have blended this better and maybe liked it a little bit more, but it was fine and it was something that I had never done with this palette. I also do really like the Sweet Peach palette. It's not one that I would like consider like decluttering anytime in the future, especially because like I said, I love that luscious shade. It had been a while since I had reached for this palette though, so I was really excited to get this as one of the randomly selected palettes. Then we have the Zoeva Cocoa Blend palette, and I've said on this, or I've said on my channel before that this is kind of a lackluster, a bit of a disappointment palette for me. However, it is a really easy palette for me to create where to work looks, so I like this palette for just like going to work, like a quick, easy look. These three shades on the bottom are my favorite. Um, although I will say even the shimmer, all the shimmers in the palette, I think are a little bit underwhelming in my opinion, including this one. So if you're looking for like a wham bam sort of shimmer, you're not going to get them at least in my opinion from this palette. This palette has made me hesitant to purchase any other Zoeva palettes just because I kind of went into it with high expectations because I feel like at the time that I purchased it, a lot of people were talking about this palette specifically and Zoeva in general. But I was just a little bit underwhelmed by this palette. Now for the look that I created, I just went in with my everyday like go-to and I even took out a shade. I just went in with a substitute for love in the crease and then I used puree garnish or ganache. Gana I don't know. And then went with this all over the lid. So I just used those two shades. I actually am using this right now just as my everyday lid setting shade. So I do intend to hit pan in this at some point this year. And like I said, I'll keep this palette around because it's super easy to create easy work looks with, but definitely a little bit underwhelming. And then the last palette that I randomly selected was the ABH Subculture palette. And I was really nervous about this because this is a difficult palette to work with, at least in my opinion. I don't dislike the palette, but it is difficult to work with. So I knew that I wanted to use the two yellow shades when I was thinking about the look that I wanted to create because I had not used those at all. And what I did was I blew out New Wave, is I blew out Edge in the crease, used New Wave to kind of deepen it up a little bit, then also went in with Fudge to further deepen it up, and then I went in with the shade Adorn all over the lid to create this very fall-esque look, and then I even used um, Fudge to kind of like wing it out a little bit too, a little bit outside of my comfort zone, and again, because of my blending abilities, this palette is one that I'm always super nervous to reach for, but I do plan to pull this out a few times in the fall and create some looks with it. I really love this shade right here, Electric, because it's like this lime green shade, and I also really like Cube, although I will say that those two are a little bit difficult to work with because I feel like I'm always getting hard pan in them, and I feel like I really have to dig and scrape to kind of get the punch that I'm looking for with them. But I was excited to pull this out because I don't know if I had to even use this one time yet this year because again, just like intimidates me to use. However, I do love ABH in general and her eyeshadows. So I almost feel like I could never declutter this because it's almost like a collector's piece in my mind but I was happy to get some use out of it regardless. So that means it's time to randomly select five new eyeshadows like i said i have an entire list of all my eyeshadows and i've just been using the tiny decisions app that i downloaded which is so so fun and i've put in 10 eyeshadow palettes from that list at a time as soon as i end up using a palette so these five obviously won't go in the wheel until i've used every single eyeshadow palette that is still in my collection but i have 10 new palettes listed here and then we will just spin the wheel to see what new palettes we will be working on in August. So up first we have the Morphe 3502. And then we have the ABH Modern Renaissance. The Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. Love Trust and Fairy Dust from Tarte. And finally Modern Renaissance again, so we will respin. This is such a fun app, you guys. I use it with my work colleagues, actually. Modern Renaissance again. Um, quite a bit to make decisions at work, not like important ones, but it's kind of like a long-running joke. 
Um, Natasha did on a cranberry. Interesting. Okay, so I'm gonna go grab those five palettes and I will be right back. Okay, I grabbed the five palettes that we're, that we're gonna be working on. So up first we have this Natasha Denona Cranberry Palette. I was really excited to pick this up last holiday season, but I found that this palette alone can be pretty limiting, although I do really like each of the shades. So I'm excited to pull this out because I've only used this a few times this year. Then we have my Tarte Love Trust and Fairy Dust Palette, which I used a ton at the beginning of the year because I did have it going in a project. I do have Pan on one of the shades, and I actually do really love this palette. This is a really nice mauve toned palette, and I don't think I'll have any trouble getting some use out of that. Then we have the Classic Modern Renaissance Palette. Um, I've only used this a couple of times this year as well, so I'm excited to get some use out of this. Uh, this is getting older in my collection, so best to get use out of it now before it does indeed go bad and then two morphe palettes so the morphe jacqueline hill palette i actually have barely touched this this year so i'm actually excited i've been meaning i've been telling myself to pull this palette and use it for months now so i guess fate finally wanted me to to really pull it and then the Morphe 3502 palette looks like this. I kind of wish I had gotten this in September because it's obviously more of a fall-esque palette. Although I feel like I could use this like towards the end of August as we sort of transition into fall. I'm trying to decide whether or not I want to keep this palette actually. So I guess I'll get to use it some more and make a decision this month so those are the five palettes that i will be focused on for this episode of palette roulette i hope that you guys enjoyed this episode thank you so much for sticking around to watch and i'll catch you in tomorrow's video bye